How's it going friends? Today I want to give you some insight into what all the fancy columns and numbers and metrics mean on your ads manager. Now this is a really good video for beginners, for people who have not spent much time in the ads manager and you know frankly when you watch a lot of videos, maybe even like mine, uh, where a lot of people are talking about different metrics and different conversion rates and cost per thousand impressions and link clicks and click through rates and you name it and it's all really overwhelming. This video is gonna be great to get your head around it and make more sense of it. So let's jump into it. So we're in my ad account here and from left to right is where we'll start and I'm gonna explain exactly what each column means and then dive into perhaps some other styles of columns and then how you can customize your own column based on what you actually need to look at. Uh, now, I've been doing this for a bit over eight years now, so I have a really interesting methodology around what metrics to look at, but we'll talk about that a bit later, okay? So from left to right, we have, uh, within our ads manager, we have our campaign level. Now, to navigate this whole ads manager, on the top, you have different tabs. As you can see with my mouse here, you have the campaign tab, the ad set tab, and the ads tab. Now I'm not gonna show you how to build an ad today, though I do have another video. So let me know if you want that video and I'll link it to you on YouTube, it's absolutely fine. Now at the campaign level, from left to right, we have a tick box, which is helpful for ticking when you wanna only go to look at the ad sets or the ads for that particular campaign. That's what that tick box is there for. It's a very easy way to navigate. Then to the right, we have our toggle, which simply activates or deactivates our campaign. So if I click this blue toggle, let me just move my head out of the way. Uh, actually, maybe I won't untick it because then I might mess with my campaign. But let's say I turn on this one, you can see it's grayed out. If I turn that toggle on, it's going to turn the campaign on and activate it. Funny that. But if I don't want it to run, then I will very simply deactivate it. So the interesting thing about it is that majority of the time, you'll find that uh, you set up a campaign, uh, you might set up an ad and you're not quite ready to run it. Or those of you who are new to marketing, you might need a client or your boss to oversee or, or approve the ad first. Is you create it and you'll publish it and then come back to the campaign level and pause it, okay? Now a side note here, the longer that you leave a campaign paused, the more likely it is to reset what's called a learning phase. So I guess as a general rule, don't leave a campaign paused more than let's say 24 hours if you intend to you know, keep it working, especially if it was working in the past. Then to the right, we have the campaign name. Now the campaign name is very simply what you name it. Uh, now if you go through and create a campaign, you don't change the name, it's gonna use a campaign name default, which is likely to be the objective that you select. So if you select traffic campaign and um, you go through and create the ad and publish it, that name is probably gonna be a default of traffic. The next one is delivery and the delivery is very simply that whether it is under review, whether it is inactive or off as you can see down here, or whether it's active. So those are the three main ones you wanna look out for. Uh, obviously if it's active, it's delivering, it's spending money, it's spending budget and you know, hopefully it's working for you. Then the next column to the right, we've got the bid strategy. Now a lot of you especially those of you who are beginners, you're gonna be using what's called lowest cost. Now, I'm not gonna to talk too much about bid strategies, but just know that uh, bid strategy is lowest cost, and that just means that as the default setting of Facebook ads, it means that Facebook is trying to get you the most of your objective for the lowest cost possible. So that's a good setting. More on bid strategies, bid strategies in another video. More on bid strategies in another video. Then to the right, we have our budget. Now, if you've set your budget to the campaign level, then it's going to show the exact budget you're spending on a daily level, or perhaps even a lifetime budget. I recommend daily budgets because it means you don't have to keep extending the end date if it's a lifetime budget. But that's what the budget is, very simply what you're spending daily. Uh, you can see here on this particular campaign, if I just pull that out a bit, uh, this is using an ad set level budget. The main difference is I have more control if I'm using uh, an ad set level budget. Basically just I set budgets at the audience level, okay? Then to the right we have our results column and that will show the results of the objective you've selected. So if you've selected like I have here a message campaign, then it's gonna show me the results I've gotten uh, for that messaging campaign. Similarly, if you run a, a traffic campaign and I've run one here for, to get landing page views, then it's going to show me the uh, amount of landing page views I've got. So the results column is unique to the objective that you select, basically. Let me just move my head. 
Reach is an interesting one. So this is the amount of people that you've reached. This is the amount of people who uh, saw the ad. This is the amount of people who have been served the ad, essentially. So it's important to keep tabs on this initially uh, so that you can see that your campaign is actually feeding out. Sometimes if you go too narrow or, or too in-depth on your audience and your audience might be too small, mostly with retargeting campaigns, it may not actually reach anyone and therefore it's not spending budget and therefore your audience may be too small. So keep that in mind. The next column to the right is impressions. This is essentially the number of times that your ad has been served, or as you can see by the description there, the number of times that your ads were on screen. So here's a really good example. If uh, you and I see my ad, we've reached two people. But if I see the ad three times and you see the ad once, that is four impressions. Okay, so that's the difference between reach and impressions. Cost per result is uh, obviously intertwined with your results column. So it's the cost that has resulted to get that result. So you can see here I paid $1.68 to get a message here. So that's the cost per result column. As we move to the right, we've got amount spent. And depending on the uh, date that you've selected, the time range will show you the total amount spent within that time range. So very straightforward, the amount that you spent. And then to the right, you have the <laughs> ends column, which is essentially when the uh, ad ends. Uh, I very rarely actually set an end date, but I had for this particular message campaign, and it just shows you that it's either ongoing, meaning that it's using a daily budget, uh, or that it has an end date that you've set. And just a side note, I very rarely recommend that you set an end date uh, on your ads, mainly because if you do, What's to say if it if it works extremely well for you and it's really profitable for your business and you see opportunities to grow, if it ends, it may reset what's called a learning phase and then you have to extend the date and then you may just kind of screw your whole ad. It's not ideal. Then to the right, we have link clicks. Now, link clicks is quite an interesting one. Uh, as described here, the number of clicks on links within the ad that led to the advertiser specified destinations on or off Facebook. So link clicks could actually be someone just clicking on your Facebook page name. It could be someone clicking the see more. It could be someone clicking uh, to the bottom comment section. Link clicks aren't the best judge of measurability, put it that way. It's not, not something I spend a lot of time measuring and, and a lot of time actually looking at. Um, it's kind of, a, I guess you could say a proxy metric. I would rather look at landing page views, which is when someone uh, goes to your website, uh, if you're in e-commerce or if you're running to a landing page or your website, uh, landing page views requires someone to go to the page and load the page. So that's higher intent than just a link click. Link click could just be clicking on any number of links on your ad. Okay, then to the right, we have website purchases. You'll see that if you run e-commerce uh, and then on Facebook purchases. Uh, the main difference is that website purchases are the purchases that are attributed to your website. So if they go through Shopify, that's attributed to Shopify. And then on Facebook purchases uh, is when it goes through, I guess you could say the Facebook platform. So if you pay through Facebook shop um, or you pay on the platform in some way, shape or form, it usually shows up there, but it's not something you really need to know too much about. Now, that's the main screen. And if you look up here, you can see a button which is called Columns Performance. And that's exactly what we're looking at. That's the default uh, view of what we're looking at right here. If you wanna change that up, I think another one that I use quite frequently is uh, Performance in Clicks or video engagement. We'll go to video engagement first, okay? Now, when we click on video engagement, it's gonna give us metrics that are specific to uh, if you are running video ads. And so we've got, from left to right, it's the same. We've got impressions again, not reach, which is interesting. Uh, or reaches over here, I should say. We've got two second continuous video plays, which is the amount of um, pe <laughs> people who have played two seconds, I guess you could say. Then we've got three second video plays. Interestingly enough, seems like a glitch, even though I've got more three second video plays than uh, two second continuous video plays. Uh, but three second video plays are exactly what it sounds like. Cost per three seconds, it's a proxy metric. I don't spend much time here at all, uh, mainly because you know the videos that we're looking at, we're trying to see uh, how much it's costing for someone to consume the whole video, or at least 50%. That's a metric that I'd rather focus on because it shows me that that number one, that video is engaging, and that uh, you know I've got a, a reasonable cost to get someone to watch half my video, uh, which might be a minimum of 30 seconds. And so if you uh, read a lot of the news, you'll find that our attention spans are about three seconds. So to get 15 seconds of someone's time is quite considerable. 
Then as we move to the right, we've got 10 second video views. Again, exactly what it sounds like. Cost per 10 second video views. We've got through plays, which is essentially just um, 15 second video views. I don't know why they didn't just call it that. And then cost per through play, so that's that. We've got reach again. We've got amount spent. And then to the right, we've got the more interesting stuff that I spend most of my time in, and that's video plays at 25%. So if your video goes for 60 seconds, uh, and I watch 15 seconds of that, that's 25%. Uh, so that'll come up here. And then similarly, video plays at 50%, 75%, 95%, and 100%. I guess a good place to be for videos is at 50%, let's say you have a 30 second video, you don't wanna be paying more than 50 cents Australian, it's gonna be less US, for a 50% video view at 30 seconds. Um, that number can go up, uh, as your video length goes up as well. So at one minute, you wouldn't wanna pay more than a dollar. In fact, you'd probably want, wouldn't wanna pay more than about 80 cents for a one minute video view. That tells you that number one, your video is engaging, um, and that tells you that that video is something that people wanna consume and hopefully see a lot of value in as well. And then it's good to know, obviously, um, how many people have gone through 75, 95, and 100% so that you might look at a retargeting campaign, retargeting people, who have watched uh, the, that length of your video, okay? So that's video engagement, and that's how we got there, that little button up there, which is columns. The next one I wanna show you is performance in clicks, which is another one that I tend to spend a lot of time in, mainly because I just wanna look at frequency, and I'll explain what that is. Now, again, it's all the same from left to right. We've got all of these columns, results, reach, and then frequency is the new one that we haven't covered yet. Frequency is everyone who the ad has been served to, how frequently they've seen the ad. So a couple of examples here, we've got one here in my retargeting campaign. Everyone in that campaign has seen one of these ads uh, to an extent of 42 times. Now that might feel like you're spamming people. In my honest opinion, I treat a lot of my retargeting like an email list. You know, I wanna be, all of these retargeting ads are all free video content, educational videos, uh, and I'm constantly throwing these out there to educate my audience to a point where they might even seek a mentorship with me, or they might look to our team to, you know, take over their Facebook campaigns. I'm all about delivering value, as most of you probably know as well. So that's why that's super high. We've got another one here that's 3.2. We've got one here in the Messenger campaign, which is only one. We've got one here, which is actually a retargeting campaign, which is only 1.7. I think I only started that yesterday. That's why that's so low. But put it this way, um, if your top of funnel or cold campaign or prospecting campaign, all the same things, by the way, um, is going out to people who are, who are targeting for the first time, who are seeing your brand for the first time, if that frequency within, say, the first four days shoots up over two, probably safe to say that your audience is too small. So that's a good metric to look at. And again, that's in the columns, performance and clicks column. And as you go over to the right, you see frequency. So just bear in mind if that starts to shoot up and your cost per result starts to shoot up as well, it's a really good metric uh, and number to keep an eye on. And then again to the right, we've got cost per result, budget, amount spend, ends, impressions. Cost per thousand impressions is something that we've not talked about yet and I think it's quite important. So we're gonna spend a bit of time on this one. Now, cost per thousand impressions uh, is how much it's costing you to get 1,000 impressions, obviously. Uh, if you talk to any marketer or you know people who have spent a lot of time in ads manager like me, they'll say your CPMs, they'll refer to your CPMs. So cost per M, M being the Roman numeral for 1,000, um, that's why that's called that. So if you see that acronym, CPMs, how much is it costing to get CPM, CPM this, that's what they're referring to. And the reason that we refer to it quite a bit is it's a good proxy metric, meaning that it's a good preliminary metric before you get purchases, before you get leads. It's a good metric to look at to see roughly how much it's costing to reach a thousand people and overall what's uh, trending with your campaign. So a good average to keep your CPMs at is anywhere between 12 to $18 Australian. That's gonna be less in the US, but it also depends on the price point of your product. If, if you know you're selling real estate, probably the most high ticket item you can throw out there, or if you're in a very competitive niche or target audience, then you can expect your CPMs to be super high. So at least starting out for the first time, I'd want my CPMs to be between 12 to $18. As you can see, I'm nowhere near that on these campaigns. However, uh, the ultimate goal is to get leads for this business. And I'm very happy with the volume of leads we're getting and the cost 
to get each of those leads. So this renders that column irrelevant. But if you find that, let's say that, let's say I wasn't getting any leads here, or, or let's say this was an e-commerce campaign and I wasn't getting any purchases or any sales, I would go back and look through a lot of these proxy metrics, preliminary metrics, and see whether if my CPMs were up over like $120, I would say, okay, I'm paying too much to get impressions. So now I need to figure out how to bring my impressions down. And that's another video in itself. So cost per thousand impressions is how much it's costing to get a thousand impressions. You want it between 12 to $18 Australian, uh, less in the US obviously. And that's something you want to monitor. If you find that over the past four days, that is trending up, then it tells you that your campaign is starting to fatigue and something needs to be done. Maybe you need to refresh creative, maybe you need to test out some different audiences among other things or, or recreate your offer. So that's CPMs. Over to the right, we've got link clicks again. And now we have CPC, which is cost per link click. Now, again, I don't really like to spend too much time on this because link clicks to me can be a bit skewed. But one thing I do like to look at is the column to the right of that, which is CTR, the link click through rate. So that is people clicking through to the destination. And most of the time I like to keep that for a new campaign. I like to keep that up over 1.2. Anything over two is exceptional, believe it or not, 2% that is. So we've got uh, a campaign here. It's a retargeting campaign. So it's they usually have a higher CTR, link click through rate. Go on there for 2.9, I'm happy with that. 1.9, 2.3 so on and so forth, but you wanna try and keep that over 1.2 initially to begin with. So as we go to the right, we've got clicks all, we've got CTR all, and we've got CPC all. I don't look at any of these columns, so don't spend any of your time here. So you're probably starting to notice a trend and looking across all of these metrics, things that you may or may not look at. And it is helpful to only identify the numbers and metrics that are relevant to your business so that you, know, you don't get overwhelmed by looking at all of these numbers. Now, uh, as we go back up to the column section here, we've got all of these other different views. Uh, I very rarely look at any of these other views. Again, I look at performance, uh, I look at engage, uh, sorry, video engagement, I look at performance in clicks, uh, and then we've got these wonderful things called customized columns. Now, this is fairly advanced, and I've got another video on exactly creating customized columns, but as an example, here's one I've created earlier. And from left to right, this is the only stuff that I wanna look at. So relatively the same, I've got a results column, I've got reach, I also have frequency embedded in there as well. If you remember, we had to go to performance and clicks to look at that. I've got the cost per result, uh, my budget, my amount spent, uh, ends, which shouldn't even be there really. Impressions, I now have, have CPMs. Um, I have link clicks, I have cost per link click, I have CTR. But what's new is over to the right, I now have landing page views, which is something that I've selected. Again, if you wanna learn how to customize your columns, let me know and I'll send you a link uh, that shows you within about five minutes how to do it. And again, landing page views is someone going to your website and waiting for the page to load. That to me is high intent and the cost per landing page view. Now, for the best part, I, I recommend trying at least initially advertising to a cold audience to try and keep your cost per landing page views under two dollars ideally under about a dollar fifty if you can do that then it's you know I, I would dare say that you're able to harness traffic and you have an offer or an ad that is engaging enough for people to then go to the next destination so try and keep your cost per landing page views under a dollar fifty you can see here i haven't been extremely successful at doing that other than uh messenger broadcast and i would say our retargeting campaigns but again, at the end of the day, the main metric here is, uh, for me, is getting leads, the volume and the cost per lead, and we're happy with that. So it renders a lot of these, again, proxy metrics a little bit irrelevant. And then over to the right, I've got a whole bunch of customized conversions or custom conversions. Um, I've got a cost per purchase here. I've got a type form submit, which is our quiz. Um, I've got lead magnet results. I've got uh, more lead magnet results. I've got a ROAS. Purchases, purchases, conversion value, a whole bunch of wonderful stuff which I've uh, made my own customized dashboard with. So uh, I think today we'll leave that there. Uh, hopefully it hasn't been too overwhelming. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you would like the video that shows you how to set up customized columns, let me know and I'll link it to you ASAP. But for now, all the best. I'll talk to you soon.